Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and good evening. Welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. My name is Andrea Judici and I'm your host this evening. Again with me is my guide dog who will remain unnamed for our safety and his focus. I'm here tonight to talk about technology for people who are blind and visually impaired. Both the high-end technology that we all think of, computers, smartphones, but also the low-tech technology that makes every day manageable and I have with me an absolute fabulous expert to help me talk particularly about the high-tech end of things, Steve Femigletti, who, is, um, who works at the New England Assistive Technology Center, which is a program of Oak Hill School. And um, Steve, what is, your, what is your role there? I'm the Blind Services Vocational Manager. Wonderful. Well, I'm so excited that you're here. And I want to start by talking about the fact that as a person who's been blind since birth, I have had the benefit of an amazing array of technology. And as I mentioned a moment ago, some of it is very high tech, very so complicated, I can't even tell you how it works, I just know it does. And some of it is very simple. I, I think that it is easy in a time when technology, especially, like I said, laptops and smartphones and those types of technologies are so available to forget that there's also a very simple low-tech solution sometimes that might even actually work better. And I'll give you an example. One of my brothers is also blind and when we were growing up it was not uncommon to have two half gallons of milk and two half gallons of orange juice in the refrigerator since we were going through those things like, like crazy. And if it was shopping day and they were all closed. They were all half gallon containers, they were all closed and as much as I hate to admit this, this was before they even had those little plastic pouring noses on the side so they felt exactly the same. And inevitably if I wanted a cup of milk I would open up two orange juices and something else before I got to the carton of milk. And we thought about this and pondered what to do and one moment it came to us, put an elastic band around the milk. Such a simple solution. Works on shampoo and conditioner in the bathroom, works on cat food and tuna fish, because in case you didn't know, cat food and tuna fish, can's exactly the same. It's really kind of gross, actually. Um, you don't want to make that mistake. Believe me, I've done it. Um, so I think that it's important when thinking about how to live with blindness and function in your day-to-day -day world, what are the high-tech and low-tech solutions that can make everyday tasks simpler. And Steve, I will absolutely give you lots of time to talk, but I wanted to just go through a couple of the more low-tech things that can make life interesting, easy, fun, and can be um, teaching tools. I'm going to start with something that many of us have to use, a padlock. And most of us have used a combination lock. We might use them in high school on our lockers. We might use them at a summer cottage um, on a boat. We might use them in the backyard. And most of them are a dial. And as a blind person, those are completely inaccessible. The simple solution is one that has buttons. Same thing, you have to remember your combination, but to make the combination lock open, all you have to do is press the right combination of buttons. Such a simple solution, and that way you can keep your cool stuff locked up. Another thing which is really fun um, is learning letters. Many blind people learn Braille, and Braille is a very fabulous 
way to read and write and communicate. But many people don't read Braille. Most people don't read Braille. And so the, the, the interest in learning print is there for a lot of people. And this is a very fun teaching tool. So in this, we have the Braille letter O. We have the print letter O. And then we have this octopus, which is identified down here with a Braille label. But how cool is it to be able to actually touch an octopus? Because I've never done that. And it's so fabulous to be able to feel, i.e. see, what is something that people talk about all the time. The octopuses are in songs, or is it octopi? They're in songs, they're in books, they're in restaurants on the menu. And um, it's really cool to now know what one looks like. So that's a really fun, low-tech way to learn about letters. And here's another way, because letters come in both uppercase and lowercase. So here we have a basic training tool that just has the Braille letter A with a capital and the Braille A without a capital, and then the print capital letter, large case letter, and the lowercase letter. So as a blind child, if I wanted to learn my letters, this is a tool that we could use. This actually didn't exist when I was little, because I'm as old as the dinosaurs I'm about to show you. Um, we were talking about fun. This is the best. There are now coloring books. I didn't have coloring books when I was little that were tactile. Um, this is a fairly new phenomenon. I have now five because it's so cool to have coloring books. And now I've learned it's actually hip to be an adult and have a coloring book. So this is not only a picture of a dinosaur, an eoraptor, but it also gives me some information about it. And I can take my crayons and I can color it whatever colors I want to. And I can even give it to my mom and she can put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is playtime. A lot of us play games with our families. We play cards, we play board games. Um, I think, unfortunately, that may not be happening as much now with, with electronics, but I know that New Year's Day, my brothers and I played Monopoly. And our game of Monopoly was exactly the same as everyone else's. We played the same way, the rules were the same. The only difference was that the board we played with had raised lines and was in Braille and print. So it's a little bigger. I didn't bring it in tonight because it's, I would knock Steve out with it when I <laughs> tried to hold it up. But cards are a simple, easy, fun way to play any number of games. And cards come in Braille. Just, it's just a typical playing card, but it has Braille on it. And I know that many of you watching may know all of these things, but I'm amazed sometimes how people don't really realize that these things are there. And it's, it's really cool. So those are some of the low tech solutions. I'm going to, I'm now holding a, a labeler. Many of us use a labeler like this. We might use it to label files. We might use it to label um, shelves, any, any number of things, photo albums. This is a way to make the same label you would have in print, but to make it in Braille. And like those really cool chefs on TV, presto magic, I've already got one made. Steve, allow me. And it says your name. My name, which is, is very cool. It <laughs> is very cool. Um, I'm going to talk about one more sort of what I call a not, it's not low tech because it does have batteries and involves um, quite a bit of, I think, probably te computer technology. But it's low, but it's not as high tech because it's, it's very portable and it's not, you don't have to know how to use a computer to master this tool. This is called a pen friend. And a pen friend is an incredibly powerful tool, unlike this Braille labeler, where I have to write each and every word that I want to have on the label. The pen friend is a recording device. And I'm going to use the packaging, because I didn't pre-record one, because I'm not that cool of a TV chef. I'm going to turn this on, and hopefully it's going to cooperate. It did before the show. There we go. I'm hoping that everyone will be able to hear this. So when I received this, this is the instructions that were on the, th the um, device. So you put the pen friend to one of its labels, and you can record whatever you want. Power. There are four buttons on your pen friend. Starting from the top, the thickest end of the pen, is the power on off button. And she even has a very sophisticated British accent, yeah. which is very cool. But I could take one of these labels and put it on anything in my house so if I wanted to put it onto one of my CDs, or if I wanted to put it onto 
a box of oatmeal to give me the to tell myself the instructions on how to cook the oatmeal. So those are just some basic ideas, and I'm I'm sort of rushing through them because I I really want to get to some of the more powerful scope that that technology has given us. I truly believe that I am living in a time when technology has come so far. I think back to fourth grade when I got my first computer. It was an Apple IIe, which I wish I'd kept because I think they're now worth thousands and thousands of dollars. But anyway, um, it was the very first computer I'd ever seen. And, and it was not something that most people had. It was very definitely something special because I had unique needs in being able to access material for school. And it had speech output, which I'm going to have Steve talk about. And I think back to the quality of the speech and what it was able to do and what I can do now with my laptop and my smartphone. And we're talking about the span of 40 years. And it's just tremendous. And I think it's going to just grow and grow. And, and that's really, really fabulous. I have a, I have a Fitbit. And you know, everyone has Fitbits. And they're so cool. Well, now it will, it will play with an app on my phone. And I can really easily know what's going on. 10 years ago, everyone else would have had you know, something like this. And there was no way for me to access that information because it was all resident right on this device. And there was no way for me to get that device to talk to me. So that's just a, a really cool demonstration of where our technology has come from and to. And so Steve, what I'd like to talk about with you or have you talk about with me is some of the ways, for example, I use a screen reader. So can you tell, I can. Tell me what that screen reader is and, and, and sort of how it works, because I really don't know. I just know my computer talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for having me on your program. And basically, a screen reader is a piece of software that you would install onto your PC, and it will read items that are displayed on the PC screen, and then it will also read those items to the individual who's using the PC based on a set of keyboard shortcuts that the user will give to the computer. And that's why when someone cited asked me how to do something and I can tell them how to do it from the keyboard and they really want to know how to do it from the mouse, that's why. Right, because we don't use a mouse. Although we do, with a screen reader, we do have the capability of moving the mouse pointer around the screen with the keyboard. Yes, that's, that's true. And that really freaks out sighted people <laughs> when, we do, when we do that and we don't actually touch the physical mouse. Um, Oh, I'm, excuse me, that was my pen friend turning itself off. My friends, even my electronic friends, talk to me as often as possible. Um, so I, I know that I use a PC, but I, own, I also know that I use an iPhone and that um, the technology on the iPhone is also available on the, on the, on the Macintosh um, PCs and laptop, or not PCs, but desktop and laptop computers. Right. Um. Basically, what Apple did is they created a platform where they built their screen reader into their operating system. And when they made the iPhone, they took that same technology and they put it into the operating system for the iPhone. And I think what's very interesting about the iPhone and the iPad and the iPod and even some of the other tablet devices that are out there now is that for those of us who are blind, we have the capability of not only hearing the text that's on the screen, but we have the capability to successfully use a touch screen because the way that the touch screen works is that we're able to manipulate the information based on gestures with our fingers. And for the first time ever, we now know where something is located on the screen, which is different than using a PC and a screen reader because, you know, five, six years ago, even on PCs, there were no touch screens. So you might hear an icon for Microsoft Word, but you didn't know where that was. It's true. And until I started using an iPhone, I never even thought to wonder where something was on the screen. It would, to me, it was sort of the screen was another world that I never thought about as long as I had the voice information. But now that I use an iPhone, it is kind of cool to know where everything is. And, and when I now encounter a screen, I think about the orientation of apps and icons, and which I never did before. Right. Another thing that I think is so amazing, and I'm not, I'm not in any way here 
to promote any one company. I'll use anybody's technology that works for the task I needed to do. I don't care whose company it is. That's not what I'm saying. But I think what, one of the most amazing things that Apple has done, and to my knowledge, it's not been replicated anywhere else, is that by purchasing an iPhone, and I'm not saying that's an inexpensive piece of equipment, but by purchasing an iPhone, I now have in one hand the ability to make phone calls, use, have a color identifier, have a money identifier, have a GPS, uh, have a barcode scanner, um, have a, you know, some sort of radio programming. In the past, each of those things was a device that was easily five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars per device. And that's powerful, powerful. Maybe the biggest step that I've seen in technology since I've been aware of it. Would you, do you feel similarly? I agree completely. And what I love so much about having one of those devices is how if I'm with a sighted person and we need to do something, I can do that task. For example, if I'm in the car with a coworker and we're traveling to a location, and this has actually happened to me where we've printed MapQuest directions, and I, of course, can't read the MapQuest directions and the driver can't read them because they're driving, um, and we discover that somehow the MapQuest directions are not right, I can pull out my smartphone and get directions to our destination without any need for some proprietary device that sets me apart from sighted people. I'm using the same device that they are. And at no additional charge am I getting my accessibility because the screen reader, uh, which is called VoiceOver, is built into the operating system that Apple has on their devices. And so I, too, give them a lot of credit for that. That's changed the industry significantly. And what's interesting also is that when I talk to people who have smartphones or any kind of eye device, and I tell them, oh, well, I, you know, I could use that, that one in your hand. And they're like, well, how? And I'm like, because in, in the menus, there's an accessibility menu, and I could, I could launch voiceover. And it's, so it's, it's resident on every single device. And I just, I, I'm belaboring the point. But it's, to me, it's amazing. I like taking people's phones away from them and turning it on and then giving it back to them and them saying, oh, no, turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> because they I, don't need it. I actually like to have my my computer screen covered. I don't know why sighted people seem to think they should see my screen, but it makes them crazy. I can't see your screen. Well, it's my screen. You don't actually need to see my screen, but um, it, you got to play a few little games. It saves right? your battery. <laughs> That's right, exactly. It definitely <laughs> saves your battery. Um, when it comes to people who are blind and, and visually impaired, one of the big myths is that everyone who's blind is totally blind. There's no vision at all. It's all darkness. And that is not accurate on, on, by any stretch. In fact, very few um, people are actually truly, totally blind. There's most people have some some amount of light perception, and it may be enough to actually they may have enough vision to actually use magnification, uh, whereas other people need to use voice, such as myself, need to use voice output and and braille as their as their reading medium. If someone has enough vision to use magnification, what are, what are some of the ways that that is an option? There are screen magnification software programs that you can purchase for PC and for Mac these days. And you can basically customize your level of magnification for the screen for your needs. And you can customize a background of color contrasts to help. Because for a lot of people with low vision, it's not just the magnification that they need, it's proper color contrast. Some people do really well with white on black. Some people do really well with white on blue. Um, these programs also have the capability to enhance the size and color of the mouse pointer and also give an enhancement to the blinking cursor on the screen. And they really do a phenomenal job of making things easier for people to see. And um, I've seen these kind of programs give people tremendous assistance. Um, in, in the job that I had before this one, I did a retail sales job, and we had a screen magnification program that was used right on our cash register because the cash register was running on a Windows-based PC, so we were able to use magnification. I remember when I first got hired and I said to my boss, I don't know how I'm going to use the cash register. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. We have 
we have the screen magnification software for you. And without that, I couldn't have done that job. That's, that's really cool. How about keyboards? Are there keyboards that either light up or have different <laughs> color combinations to help with that kind of contrast? There's actually a number of different keyboards that you can get which are large print. And what you have is the ability to have a keyboard, say, with a black key with white letters or yellow keys with black letters. And one of the actually two of the manufacturers of the screen magnification software programs have released their own keyboards and what they've done is along the top row of the keyboard they've added buttons that go left to right and you can control your magnification software from the buttons so it's one touch access to increasing your magnification or one touch access to decreasing the magnification turning on your mouse pointer enhancement, turning on your cursor enhancement so that you don't have to struggle, uh, you know, learning a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts to accomplish that task. What about someone who's right on that cusp? They may be, have had a slowly deteriorating vision condition. They're still able to use magnification, sort of, but would also benefit from speech output. There's a brand new program out that is geared to that population specifically. And what they've done is they have a screen magnifier that one would use, and then when their vision becomes too poor for that to be efficient and effective, there is a complete screen reader built into the program which will support braille displays. And this is being marketed as, here is a program for people who are going to lose their vision to the point that they cannot see a screen, Let's get you comfortable with your magnification and your complete screen reader so that when you cannot use that magnification anymore, you don't have a learning curve because you've been listening and using the reading features already. That is so cool. And it's, it's phenomenal. It's only been out now for about two months. Oh good, I don't feel so badly. I didn't know about it then. Um, what about for someone who doesn't want a computer but they need magnification, they want to use it to look at family <coughs> photos, they want to read the newspaper, they want to read their own mail. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting all choked up. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> there are electronic magnifiers that are available, and, and these devices go under a whole bunch of different names. CCTV, which stands for closed circuit TV, video magnifier, electronic magnifier. All of those names that I've just said mean the same thing. And they come in all different sizes and shapes now, where you can, you can have a CCTV with a 20-inch screen that's got a camera looking down at a movable tray and you place your material on the tray and that image is projected up onto the screen and you can magnify it anywhere from say two times up to 50, 60 times. So you're taking newspaper size print and turning it into newspaper size headlines. And what's really exciting about these CCTVs nowadays, to me, they, one, are now portable if you need them to be. You can, you can carry them in your purse and they have rechargeable batteries. And two, the desktop models have a feature where you can actually take a picture of the text and have it read back to you if you're, you know, if you're reading a newspaper article and your eyes get tired and you still want to continue to read, it'll take a picture and read it to you out loud. Which is also really functional for learning how to cook your frozen dinner. Yes. Or the instructions on your soup can. Yes. That is really cool. Um, a, a technology that I've just started using, which is again, sort of somewhere in the middle between these real high-tech ones that Steve is talking about and the ones that I was talking about over here with the you know, raised light coloring book, I have right now, one of the major areas where there's confusion and danger is medication. And I use something called Script Talk, which is provided free to anyone who needs it through Envision America. And it is a station that's at my house, very small, about the size of um, a, a, what used to be an answering machine, but no one has those anymore. <laughs> uh, that's why I stumbled <laughs> over that. Um, it's, not, it's a very small device. It has a very small footprint, and it's just got three simple buttons. And when I get it ready and turn it on, I set my prescription bottle down on it, and it reads to me, because of the way that the pharmacy printed out the label, all of the information about the med medication, what it is, when it was prescribed, who prescribed it, how much, how often I take it, when, how many refills, the number to call, the doctor's name, everything. 
Um, it uses an RFID chip, which is a radio frequency, what, help me? I don't know. Okay, an RFID <laughs> chip. I hate when I feel silly. Um, and so it's just it, that it, taking the wrong medication is a terribly, terribly dangerous, scary thing. And as a blind person, whether you live alone or you just don't want to have to go asking someone all the time, what bottle is this, what bottle is that, it's such a pow empowering tool, and I just, I just love it. Um, and so that's another area where it's just becoming more and more uh, all available to have things to make yourself independent. And it doesn't matter if you live alone or you ha are part of a family, everyone else who's sighted in that unit, in that family unit, has the opportunity to pick up something and read it if they are a sighted person without a reading disability. And as a blind person, you, your family can be as supportive as they can possibly be. It's not, it's, sometimes it's nice just not to have to um, always ask someone. You, know, you don't want to be the 17 year, I didn't want to be the 17 year old girl going, mom, are these my birth control pills? It's just, you, you want some privacy. And so I think that all of these things we're talking about are so empowering and so important. I've had a lot of blind people say to me, well, it's okay because I've got my husband or my wife or my daughter or my son. My sister comes over every couple of days. My brother comes by once a week. He'll read the mail. And all of that is very wonderful to have family and friends that are supportive. But none of us wants to be constantly like, oh, you're my friend. Why don't you come over? And, oh, while you're here, could you read my mail? Oh, you're my friend, and while you're here, could you, you know, help me sort this money? Because I don't know what the, the, the paper bills are. I don't have a money identifier. You want sometimes to just be with your family and friends just for company and not always asking them for, for assistance. And these tools that we're talking about can really help with all of that. Um, as we sort of come to a close, Steve, is there anything I haven't asked you that you really feel I've been remiss as far as technology goes that you'd like to highlight? No, uh, I do want to make one point that I think is important for people to realize and understand is that a person who is blind, like you were saying earlier, most people who are considered blind, they might have some usable vision, but there's a big difference between a blind person and somebody that's say just legally blind or they have low vision and the process to which someone with low vision would go about doing a task is drastically different than the way you for example might do something and i was thinking about that when you were talking about the the prescription situation yes. yep and how for me i have enough usable vision that i can take that prescription and read it under a cctv where you have to have a verbal way to get that right. information. Exactly. So now we both have a way to independently read our medication. And that's what's so important is that you come up with a tool, whether it's high tech or low tech, whether it is something very simple that you can put in your purse or something very complicated that you have to have Steve come and train you for 50 hours. Oh, that's me um, on the computer. <laughs> it doesn't, there's, there's a tool out there. And if you can get creative and you can do your homework, you can often really learn what those tools are, and they can really make life richer and easier and more independent. And I, I feel so strongly that that's important. And I learned that early on because my family supported me having technology. My mom got me that computer. So again, this is, as I see it, a blind woman's view. Steve, thank you so much for being here today. I, I've learned a lot, and I didn't think I had anything to learn tonight, so that shows you what I know. I want to thank all of you out there for watching and for being excited about technology and don't ever stop being innovative because there's always more to be done. Keep talking. Why are we, okay. What are we talking? So, what, so who makes that technology? Who? The, the, the new, like the, oh, the progressive. I didn't, I didn't want to mention. Okay. I wasn't I sure what the taped. rules were. Um, we're not being taped, right? No. Okay. I didn't. I wasn't.